Hi, welcome to Gravitate. I hope you're really well. Uh, before we start, you're going to need a Bible, and if you want to take any notes, you're going to need a pen and a piece of paper. Um, I'm going to pray, and then we're going to make a start. Dear God, thank you that you were with us. Thank you that even though we're far apart from each other, you are with each and every one of us and that we can come together still to learn uh, and grow our relationships with you. Amen. Okay, this week is Pentecost, which is the uh, day when the Holy Spirit came to the disciples. And that's the passage we're going to look at this morning. Uh, we can find that in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. And I'm going to read. Um, it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in, bewilder in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Christians and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. OK, so um, context is really important when we read the Bible. Um, it helps us to understand what's happening and it helps us to understand where the passage fits in the story of the Bible as a whole. So my first question for you, my first task for you is to have a look and have a think. What has just happened before this passage? Where does this fit in the story of the Bible? OK, if you turn back a page, you can see that Jesus just ascended back into heaven. For the disciples, for the last couple of months, they've experienced the Easter story, Jesus dying uh, at the hands of the Romans, Jesus coming back to life again, Jesus' resurrection. Uh, and then he spent time with them. And the last thing they experienced of Jesus, obviously, is him ascending back up into heaven. That's just happened. In Acts uh one four to eight jesus just before he ascends says to them um do not leave jerusalem but wait for the gift my father promised which you have heard me speak about for john baptized with water but in a few days you will be baptized with the holy spirit so when they met together they asked him lord are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of israel he said to them it is not for you to know the times or dates the father has set on his own authority but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus says to them, stay in Jerusalem. I'm going to send my spirit, God's spirit. So that you can tell everyone about me. 
And the other bit of context is that Pentecost, which is what they're celebrating in this passage, is also a Jewish festival and it's all about the harvest. So the reason that there's lots of Jews from all over the place in Jerusalem at that time is to celebrate Pentecost. OK, so task two, what happens to the disciples in this passage? And why does it happen? What happens to the disciples and why does it happen? Go. Um, the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, comes to them. Like Jesus said it would, like God promised it would, uh, the Holy Spirit comes. And it comes in the form of a rushing wind, doesn't it? It comes in the form of fire on the tops of their heads. And then it gives them the ability to speak all sorts of different languages. OK, so that's what happens. But why does it happen? Well, I think there's two big reasons here. The first one is to make it really clear that what's happening and what's going to happen is from God. That these events aren't, these events aren't normal events. Um, so it's clear that the power behind what's happening is God. This isn't the disciples suddenly becoming really incredibly like eloquent speakers. This is God acting. And the second thing is that I think it's not just this experience of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit coming, isn't just about the disciples feeling closer to closer to God or this spiritual experience for them. It's so that all of those people who've come to Jerusalem for the festival can hear about Jesus. The rest of this chapter is Peter doing just that, telling people, uh, telling the people listening about Jesus' death and resurrection. The Holy Spirit has come to the disciples to give them the power to share him, to share the news of him. But the first thing Peter does is he explains what is happening to the disciples, uh, to the crowd around. So he explains to the crowd what has happened, why this incredible thing has happened, why the disciples are speaking all these different languages. Um, so I need to have a look at what Peter says and see if you can figure it out. Why does Peter say this is happening? The first thing Peter does, isn't it? He uh, he reminds the people of an Old Testament prophecy, something that God said hundreds of years before. Uh, effectively, Peter is saying God said this would happen. Um, God said, doesn't he? It says at the start. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. So hundreds of years before this event, hundreds of years before Jesus said to them, I am going to send my spirit. God said, I am going to send my spirit. Um, and not just on a couple of people like it has been in the past, but on everybody. And then there's this incredible picture of what it's going to look like when God's pouring out his power and his presence on everyone. And not just on a few special people like in the past, like in the Old Testament heroes we've read about. But every single person that believes in Jesus, that follows Jesus. And not just in particular places like in the temple, but everywhere. God's presence and God's power is for everybody who follows Jesus. And that's not just a description of what's happened on that day to the disciples. But it's that's what's happening now and to us. We are part of that vision of God. We are included in this. The passage talks about people having prophecies and visions and dreams. And these are all ways God talks to the people, talks to people. So the prophe this prophecy, this passage is saying that everybody is going to have God's spirit and everyone is going to hear God speaking and everybody who calls on Jesus will be saved. So if you are a Christian, you are included in this vision. You have God's spirit. You can hear God speaking and you have been saved by Jesus. Pentecost marks the start of the message of Jesus and the power and presence of God spreading from one small group in Jerusalem all the way across the planet to us here in Devon. And just like the disciples didn't have this experience this outpouring of God, this Holy Spirit moment um, just for themselves. It's the same for us. If you're a Christian, if you are a follower of Jesus, then his spirit is being poured out on you. You have the Holy Spirit. He wants to talk to you. 
he wants to sh you to share that with the world. He wants to sh you to share the message of Jesus with the world. And you have the Holy Spirit. You have his power and his presence to help you do that. Pretty incredible. Um, so my challenge for you this week, I've got two challenges. The first one, are you listening to God? It's really clear. God wants to speak. God is speaking to his people. Are you listening? And what, what might God be saying to you at the moment? What is God saying to you at the moment? And my second one is that thought about sharing it with the world. That's a massive task. But actually, we've got God's presence. It's not us being incredible and doing it. It's God using us. So let's start a little bit more manageable. Let's think about it as who can you be more open? Who in your life could you be a bit more open about your relationship with God with? Uh, I'm going to pray and then we're done. God, thank you that you are with us. God, even though you've set us this gigantic, scary task, God, you are with us in all of it, God. Help us to hear what you have to say to us this week, God, and help us to see opportunities to be more open about you with our friends. Amen. I hope you have a really great week.